Hey guys, I wanted to do a video that talks about uh, linear transformations and like what, what they actually are. And when we do like all these computations with them, it gets a little bit confusing. So understanding like, what they are is really, really helpful for actually doing like the, the harder math that's involved with these. So let's break this word up. When we think of transformation, we can kind of think of this as a function. So it's kind of like in calculus how we have like something that we're inputting, which would be like x in a function, and that every x has a certain output, and that output output depends on how the function is defined, right? And it could be like f of x. So when we think of like a linear transformation, our input is kind of like a vector. It's like putting into a vector into a function. So we're, we're putting in a vector into a function and we're getting some kind of output. So it'll output some new vector. Right? So and when we think of like a, a linear transformation, let me zoom out a bit we can kind of think of it as taking like let's say this vector right here and when we apply this transformation we can like shift it up we can stretch it out we can kind of move it to you know whatever and this might be the the output right so you can kind of think of that vector as like moving in space right it's like shifting This is my input vector, this is my output vector. So think of it as taking a vector and then like shifting or moving it to some new output vector. And that's like our transformation, right? And when we think of when we think of linear transformations, we're not talking about we're usually not talking about just like a, a single vector. We're taught when we apply a linear transformation, we're transforming space as a whole. So when we, we, when we apply linear transformation, we're changing how space looks. Like we're squishing it, or we're stretching it out, or we're, um, you know, rotating it, or, some, what, or something like this. And you can imagine that it can get really, really crazy looking. And that's where linear comes in. And so linear, it basically limits how crazy these things can get. And one of the things that makes it a transformation linear is that the origin, the origin should stay in, in its place. Stays in place. And remember how I'm saying that we're, we're not just talking about a single vector. We're, when we apply a linear transformation, we're changing all of space. So if once we change space, if all the vectors that were anchored at the or origin, if they, the origin starts moving around, it, it's not a linear transformation anymore. So that's number one. And number two is that any any like straight lines that I draw and then I transform them, if they be if they don't stay as straight lines, then it's not a linear transformation. So uh, lines stay as lines. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Like let's say that we have some input vector straw in in blue that looks like this. And if I were to transform it, and now this vector looks like this, then that is not a linear transformation, right? Because I'm like bending it, and is it's not linear, right? You can kind of, you could probably guess that from the name, linear, right? It's got to stay as lines. So let's talk a little bit about how can we um, describe a linear transformation. And the most important thing is actually the basis vectors. And I'll show you what I mean. Because we know that if we have the basis vectors, let's take R2 for example. This, this will be E1. This will be uh, E2. Right, these are our standard basis vectors. And let's say that we, we have a vector that looks like this this we will call x 
And we can see that x is made up as a linear combination of these basic vectors, right? As all vectors in R2 would be. And we can see very clearly that this looks like it's it's negative one times e2. And oh, and I guess wait x yeah sorry this should be these these uh, should be labeled differently. This should be e um, e no e1 should be the green one, and e2 should be the other one. I, I guess it doesn't really matter, but we'll, we'll stay with the, the standard convention. So you got negative e1, and then it looks like we're adding 2 times e2, right? If we were to add that, those, those two vectors, then we would result in x. So we can say here that x equals negative 1 times e1 plus 2 times the other standard basis vector, uh, e2. And if we were to apply some linear transformation to this, then let me, let me just draw that out really quick. So as you can see here, as I, as I just drew out, th so these are what uh, these linear, this is some linear transformation L, what it would map all of those vectors to. And I know this is right because, uh, like, I, I've I've got this from like a different a different video. So like, you're not supposed to actually know what these would map to. So if you're worried that you don't know how I got this, don't worry because it would it should be described. But I know that for some linear transformation, this is what it would look like. And the important thing to note here is that it's this this our transformed x. So L of x it's still going to be equal to negative one times the transformed e hat or e1 plus two times the transformed e2 right which is really cool it's really cool Right, and let me just draw that out real quick. Looks like negative one times that, times two, times that that other transformed vector, right? So let's let's write this out in terms of like our actual vectors. So our linear transformation of that vector x, that transformed vector x that we have here, and we write it kind of with this like function notation. We can see that this is negative one times, and I'm gonna write out the actual vector here, that's our transformed component, one negative two plus two times, and then this, this transformed E2 vector is three, zero, right? So what you might notice is that for some arbitrary x vector, right? We know that the linear transformation of any x, if it if it had the com the coordinates x1, x2, it would just be x1 times, and this is the linear transformation of e hat plus x2 times our linear transformation of the the other vector or, or the other standard basis vector. Right, and something that you you might not have noticed is that this can be broken up into um, like matrix multiplication, right? Because this is just matrix multiplication. If I had the matrix where the the first column was the tr the transformed version of our first basis vector times or, and then sorry, then the next column is the linear transformation of our second basis vector. Sorry, my my, uh, my computer's going a little bit slow here. And it's multiplied by that vector x. We can see that this also describes the linear transformation. And this is really cool because this is telling us that any matrix here multiplied by a vector, it means that that matrix can be interpreted 
as some transformation of space, right? Where each column is where our standard basis vectors have transformed to. So that's, that's really, really cool. So the, the, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway from, I guess, linear transformations is that we can write it, or the, uh, the output of our linear transformation can be described as some matrix, and we call it the standard matrix because it's where our standard basis vectors land, multiplied by some vector x that we're inputting into the function. So when we multiply x by that standard matrix, what we're doing is actually transforming all of space. And that's really, really cool. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna end this video here. And in the next couple videos, I'm gonna get into a little bit more of like computational things with linear transformations. But this should uh, provide like a, a pretty decent uh, foundation to build off of.